Hey my friends, just a heads up that over the course of making all these YouTube videos, especially the one about the no plugin, no problem, I found out that everything I'm about to show you inside this video, I can teach you for free in Photoshop, which the next video is going to go over. It's also going to include a free custom action that is going to coincide with that video. It's going to go step by step over the process of how to create that action. And for those who don't want to go step by step, it's just going to have a free download in the description. Now, for those who already have Lumenzia and would like to speed up their editing process, then I recommend this video for you. And for anybody sitting on the edge about buying Lumenzia, then I highly recommend this for all your HDR work in which Flash just isn't going to be able to cut it. Take this job, for instance. I only had one hour to shoot a video, photos, and a virtual tour, so naturally you can see how lighting up a space properly would take up too much time. I will eventually go over how to edit this HDR image with Lumenzia, so look out for that in a future video. And enjoy this one on how to speed up your workflow using the plugin to do so. Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Brandon Watts. Today we're going to be going over my favorite plugin, not only for HDR photography, but also for real estate photography. That's going to be Lumenzia. What is Lumenzia? It's a luminosity masking panel that allows you to make selections based off of an image's luminance values. By doing this, we are able to take multiple exposures from light to dark and effectively merge them into one image that is well balanced between the shadows, midtones, and highlights. This not only helps for its original intention, which is for landscape photography, but also helps us here with real estate photography by speeding up the workflow, which essentially is the main reason why I use it. Now, some might say, why not just use Lightroom's built-in HDR merge function or something like Infuse or Photomatix? And to that I say, because adding those pieces of software takes up too much time and adds too many steps, especially when you have to consider that you're typically working on several images for a house, so all those steps definitely add up over the course of a full edit. Compare this to just selecting all your images at once, throwing them into Photoshop as layers, and then hitting it with a custom action that takes care of everything for you, including merging your ambient brackets into one HDR exposure. Well, I'd say that's pretty dang worth it. So how do we install Lumenzia? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is go on head on over to the official website at gregbensphotography.com slash Lumenzia. The main link as well as a second affiliate link will be posted in the description if you'd like to help support the channel. The plugin itself is relatively affordable at 40 US dollars, and although I bought the bundled exposure blending course as well, it is not needed for what we are about to do, so therefore only buy it if you want a deeper understanding of the plugin as well as luminosity masking. After purchasing the plugin, you'll receive a set of emails with a confirmation which will lead you to the download page. We can then download the plugin, extract the download to a folder, and install it into Photoshop. You just go into your Lumenzia extracted folder, open up V for Victor 10, version 10, and then halfway down, you're going to see a Lumenzia Unified Plugin Installer. You want to double click that. Creative Cloud Desktop will then open. You'll click Install Locally. Then you'll hit OK to install the Lumenzia plugin. And now Lumenzia is installed. Now that Lumenzia is installed in Photoshop, let's go into Lightroom, grab our set of images, which include our three ambient bracketed exposures, as well as our flash pops. We'll right click, edit in, and then go into open as layers in Photoshop. Now that all those layers are opened into Photoshop, what we'll do is go ahead and drag Lumenzia into this uh, tab over here. Actually, you know what? Let's bring this down. We'll have the history up top, Lumenzia down here. We'll open up this menu on the top right. We'll go into interface size slash modes. And then we can go from large compact to large. Hit OK. And that will give us the entire plugin from top to bottom. We have all our selections. If you open up this a little bit more, we have even more options. This is the auto alignment, which I really like to do over here under color. You can make selections based off of color rather than just off of uh, luminance values uh, that comes in handy quite a bit as well. Uh, so there's, there's a lot that goes on with this plugin, but what we need it for is really quite simple. Now, what I'm about to show you might seem like a lot, but once you have all your steps recorded as an action, you'll be blowing through all your images quickly and you'll be saving tons of time. So let's get started with our HDR ambient. First thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and drag our middle exposure down to the bottom of our three image exposure stack. So that way we have our darkest layer on top. This will be for our highlights. This one will be our brightest exposure. This will be for our shadows inside the shadow area and then this is going to be our base ambient layer that we're going to blend into we'll go ahead and make this brightest exposure visible go into Lumenzia, and what we're trying to do is is select the darkest region without going too overboard 
whatever is white is revealed anything that's uh black is concealed so you can see here if i choose a darks 2 all these dark spots over here inside the image will be selected if i hit select and you can see those marching ants i don't really want want d2 or i don't really want d i would prefer to have d2 as a selection so we'll do a control d to deselect do a d2 for that selection and then we'll just hit select then we can hit it with a mask we get this pop-up right here which i do not want to feather my selection so i'm going to hit do not feather i will remember this choice so that way it doesn't always ask me uh, for a feather feathered selection what i want to happen is for a layer mask to pop up i do not want a vector mask so i will hit i will select layer mask also select remember mask choice so that way this menu doesn't always pop up and now we have a mask which if i hold down alt and click on the mask you can see that that mask is everything white is revealed anything black is concealed now let's drag this over right here and this slider is going to be our feather our feather slider so you can see as i drag that up how it feathers out our selection what i want to do is set this bright exposure selection to around 300 pixels for a feather and you can see how that affects this is turned off this is just the base turned on how it brings in some of those shadows it's uh kind of discreet with this image doesn't bring in a lot of shadows but for other images it works quite well now for our highlights our darkest layer what we're going to do with this one is we're going to hit l2 anything white is revealed anything black is concealed so you can see that there is a little bit that's selected uh throughout the image what if i do l3 l3 refines that a little bit more so i think i'm going to go with l2 still l2 and d2 is what i usually prefer that's what that is what is recorded inside of my action so i'm going to do select mask and now we can see how these highlights are brought back but we haven't feathered it yet so let's feather that click on the mask and we're going to feather these highlights by about eight pixels doesn't have to be exact but relatively now you can see how that affects it for those highlights brings back those highlights so if i do a control zero to fit screen for the image you can see now that this was the base where we had some blown out highlights some of the shadows were a little dark um not really but not really for this image but uh typically adding in these highlights and shadows blending them in through lamenzia cuts out a lot of time once you have it recorded as an action we're going to finish out this we'll do a control e that's our ambient we'll set this to a luminosity we'll set this layer to a 50 percent blend duplicate it by doing control j and we'll set this layer to color we'll add a black mask by holding down alt hitting the mask we'll group these two together by doing control g this will be our hdr ambient and there we are okay now what we can do is go on with the rest of the process i'll bring up my actions and we'll do a dark and color repair we'll do a gradient blend we'll bring up these back rooms over the dark and color repair set them both to screen and there we are there now if i do a control shift alt e i can do a control control shift a to go into camera roll hit auto see what it gives us that's not too bad boom contrast a little bit of some highlights to bring that back and uh there we are there i'd say that looks 
quite good. But what if you wanted to turn this entire process into an action? How would you go about doing so? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and go into this uh, options menu again for Lumenzia. And we'll drop down to Utilities. We'll hit Load Lumenzia Actions. Okay. And now once we go into our Actions folder, we'll have this new folder titled Lumenzia Actions. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new folder. This one is going to be YouTube Actions, just to keep it separate. And what we're going to need is our L2 mask, as well as our D2 mask. So drag the L2 mask and the D2 mask into your new folder. And now we can uh, start creating our new action. This is going to be titled our HDR merge. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and disable the visibility on this top layer by hitting control and comma to disable that. Then we'll hit alt plus left bracket. Do a control left bracket to move that layer down. That's going to be our middle exposure to move below the darkest and brightest layers. Now we can do a alt right bracket to go back up to our brightest. Make sure you stop recording. And what you're going to want to do is select everything inside of this D2 mask, except for the top and bottom commands. Uh, they're both labeled stop. You don't want to select the stop commands, just select everything in between and then drag them below your select forward layer. And then with everything still selected, go ahead and just hit play action. And that's going to create our mask. Then start recording again, select the layer mask, go into your properties and feather it 300 pixels. Boom. Now we'll do a alt control A to select all the layers. Do a control comma to make all the layers visible again. Alt period to select the top layer. And we'll stop recording again. And we'll do the same thing, but this time with the L2 mask, we'll just drag all that below the select front layer. With all that added, now we can do play action and we have the mask created for that. We'll start recording again. Select your new layer mask and we will feather that by eight pixels. Then what we'll do is select both layers by doing an alt shift left bracket. Do control E to merge. Go up to your layer, rename layer. And we'll name this HDR ambient. And now we can stop recording. We'll close this folder. Go up to the very top uh, around, where is it? Uh, delete layer. And that will reset all your exposures, all your layers. And what we can do is just go ahead and do HDR merge, hit play. And there you go. That's gonna be your ambient bracket right there. Now the highlights don't look like much because on this uh, ambient file, the highlights were not exposed for, which is okay. Because I was gonna do a window pull anyways. So let's just gonna finish this off. I'm gonna add my ambient blend. Then I'll do my dark and repair. I'll do my gradient. Bring up my window pulls. Set them to darken. Let's see here, which is this? This is gonna be this window right here. M for marquee. Make that quick selection. W for quick select, holding down Alt to make sure that I am deselecting the parts that I don't need. Okay, P for pen. Just to get rid of this shadow right there. We'll close that selection. Right click, make a selection, subtract, hit OK. Hit this with a layer mask, bam. Do the next one. This one, I'm just gonna hold down Alt, add layer mask. Make that a black layer mask. Then I'll hit X for X-ray. Switch my, my colors, my foreground color to white. And I'll just brush in. 
super quick. There we are. Now the last thing I have to do is you'll notice that this dark and repair layer uh, has a flash spot right here inside the mirror. So I'm going to add a layer mask to that. B for brush. Make sure it's a black color on a white mask. There we are. Now I can do a control alt shift E, merge all visible, control shift A, open up camera roll, hit it with an auto. Boom. Look at that. It's too easy. Too easy. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you all for coming out. I always appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you. You all take care and have a great day.